भगवते वासुदेवाय नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय हाय कृष्णा वेलकम टू दिस वेरी आस्पिशियस स्टार्ट टू द मोस्ट ग्लोरियस मंथ ऑफ द ईयर इस कार्तिक महोत्सव इस दामोदर मंथ सो वी विल डिस्कस टुडे द ग्लोरीज ऑफ कार्तिक एंड डिस्कस हाउ वी कैन ऑब्जर्व कार्तिक टू आर फुलेस्ट बेनिफिट सो सच वी आर गोइंग टू रीड अ वर्स फ्रॉम भगवद गीता Eighth chapter, fifth verse, in which Krishna says, "Antakale jamal neva smaram mutva kale varam ya prayati smar bhavam yati nas jatr samshaya." And if you know this verse, and it says, "And whoever at the end of his life quits his body, remembering me alone, at once attains my nature. Of this, there is no doubt." Purple by His divine grace, you see Bhakti Vedanta Swami Shiva Prabhupada. Shiva Prabhupada ki. In this verse, the importance of Krishna consciousness is stressed. Anyone who quits his body in Krishna consciousness is at once transferred to the transcendental nature of the Supreme Lord. The Supreme Lord is the purest of the pure. Therefore, anyone who is constantly Krishna conscious is also the purest of the pure. The word Shmaran, remembering, is important. Remembrance of Krishna is not possible for the impure soul who has not practiced Krishna consciousness in devotional service. Therefore, one should practice Krishna consciousness from the very beginning of life. If one wants to achieve success at the end of his life, the process of remembering Krishna is essential. Therefore, one should constantly, incessantly chant the Maha Mantra. हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे लॉर्ड चैतन्य हैज अ बॉयज दैट वन कैन बी एज टॉलरेंट एज अ ट्री द रोड ऑफ ईश हिशना देयर मे बी सो मेनी इंपेडिमेंट्स फॉर अ पर्सन हु इज चैंटिंग हरे कृष्णा नंदलस टॉलरेटिंग ऑल दीस इंपेडिमेंट्स वन शुड कंटिन्यू टू चैंट हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे सो दैट एट द एंड ऑफ वंस लाइफ वन कैन हैव फुल बेनिफिट ऑफ कृष्णा कॉन्शियसनेस ओम ज्ञान अग्निनंदस्य ज्ञानंजना शलाकय चक्षुर मिलितं येना तस्मै श्री गुरवे नमः श्री चैतन्य मनोभीतूतले स्वयं कदाति स्वदाक वंदेहम श्री गुरो श्रीयुता पदकमल श्री गुरो वैष्णवांश श्रीरूप साग जाता सह गण रघुनाता तम सजीव साधवैत सावदूत परिजन सहित कृष्ण चैतन्य श्रीराधा कृष्ण पदा सगन ललिता श्री विशाखान्वता हे कृष्ण करुणा सिंधो दीन बंधो जगतपते गोपेशा गोपिका कांत राधा कांत नमोस्तुते तप्त कांचन गौरंगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी वृषपानुसते देवी प्रणमा प्रिय वंचकल्प्रुभ्य कृपा सिंधु पति पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम नमो विष्णुपराय कृष्ण पृष्ठा भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदात स्वामी नामिने नमस्ते सरस्वते देव गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवाणी पाश्चात देशतारिणे जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवासदी गौर भक्तवृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 
So the verse reads again, And whoever at the end of his life quits his body remembering me alone at once attains my nature. Of this there is no doubt. In this chapter 8, it is called Attaining the Supreme. And Srila Prabhupada quotes one mantra more than any other mantra in the purports of this chapter in particular. Anybody want to guess what mantra it is? In this purport alone, he quoted it how many times? Two times. It gives us some insight. What is the way to attain the Supreme? Chanting the Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Hare Ram. So the greatest achievement we can uh, acquire, that we can accomplish in our life, is to reconnect with our eternal Supreme Father, Lord Krishna. And go back home, back to God. And in pure love of God, and Krishna Prem. That is what Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to give. So, this process of going back home, back to Godhead, is described in this verse. And what do we have to do? We'll just, whoever at the end of his life remembers Krishna, one goes back home, back to Godhead. So in many ways, it's very simple. Right? Is it so complicated? We know what, the, what we need to do. At the end, remember Krishna. But what's the catch? We don't know when it's going to happen. And what we know is that at the time of leaving this body is a very stressful situation. And many, many thoughts will come to our mind. Who is going to take care of my kids? What's going to happen to my bank accounts? What's going to happen to my cars in the driveway? Who's going to get the house? Oh, I didn't go see the Taj Mahal. I forgot to see the Grand Canyon. All these ideas are going to manifest in our heart. And what are we less likely to remember? Krishna. So we know today that I just have to remember Krishna. So Prabhupada comments in this verse that what should one do then? One should practice remembering Krishna from now onwards. If I'm remembering Krishna 24-7, then whenever death comes, no worries, I'm prepared. But if I spend the life never thinking of Krishna, but knowing this is my answer, what is the hope that at the end of my life I'll actually think of Krishna? Very rare. We can say almost impossible. So the key is to remember Krishna. So how to remember Krishna? So we remember and we meditate on things that we like, that we love. And we meditate on our family, on our bank account, on our fame in society, on all our good qualities, you know, our friends. These are the things that we are constantly doing shmaranam of because we have some attraction to it. So how to do Vishnu shmaranam, remembering Krishna? We must increase our attraction to Krishna. So, this brings us then to this most holiest of months, Kartik. This month is profusely glorified in Shastra as the holiest of all months. And we know in any day outside of Kartik, when we perform devotional service, Krishna reciprocates with us in great degrees. We, stay, we take one step to Krishna, He takes a thousand steps to us. It's not a one-to-one -one relationship. And we can understand that logically. If a child has been separated from his father, child is wandering in a market, separated from father. Who is in more anxiety about that separation? Father or child? And who is running faster to find child? Father or child? 
Even child at some point may become bewildered. Oh, look at this toy. And momentarily even forget their separation. But will father ever forget? Oh, there's a nice uh, donut here. Maybe I should stop and have a vegan donut. Father's constant meditation, how to get back my child. So who is our Supreme Father? Krishna. So Krishna is longing for all of us to come back to Him. He is intensely desiring. But we in ignorance have been distracted by some toy in the marketplace or by some, you know, candy that someone is giving us or all other kinds of material allurements. And such, we are wandering in this world and we have forgotten that we are separated from our Father. But actually all the things that give us challenges and difficulties in the world, all of them, every single last one of them, whatever problems you want to list, you can even use the back side of the paper if you need it. They're all solved by one step. Connecting back to Krishna. Remembering our eternal Father. In that single step, everything is accomplished. So, ordinarily, in any other time of the year, Krishna is running to us as we make even single steps towards Him. But because He is so desirous to be reunited with all of us, like any father who has been separated from their child, Krishna in this month of Kartik bestows even more blessings. That one who takes one step to Krishna in this month receives millions of steps in return from the Supreme Personality of God and Himself. So many blessings are bestowed upon one who observes this month of Kartik. In the Skanda Puran, it's explained that one who offers a lamp to Radha Damodar in this month, they destroy the number of sins that one can accumulate in 1,000 kalpas, which is four yugas times a thousand. That's a lot of time. Whatever sins we may have accumulated in this giant duration of time, by the 30 second offering of a lamp, whoosh, vanquished. One who observes the uh, Ekadashis during this month of Kartik, the Lord reserves their space back home, back to God. And like this, there are endless glories of observing this month of Kartik. And this month of Kartik is so sweet because it is why Krishna is um, so bestowing so many, uh, so many blessings upon us because He is anxious to have us back. But why he picked this month as the most beneficial? Because this month is the month of Shrimati Radharani. This is Shrimati Radharani's month. She is known as Kartiki Devi. Srila Bhupu Goswami describes uh, uh, Shrimati Radharani as Kartiki Devi. That is why this month is known as Kartika. It is due to her being the child of Kirtida Sundari, most beautiful Kirtida. So this month of Kartik is the month of Radharani. We know who is most dear to Krishna? Shrimati Radharani. And Shrimati Radharani is who to all of us in our eternal journey? Our mother. She is our mother. And so in this month, of mother, she is created this most wonderful opportunity for us to 
take giant steps forward in purifying the heart so that we can go back home, back to God. Because Srila Prabhupada writes here that remembering Krishna 24-7, who is it easy for? It is easy, Prabhupada says in the purport, for the pure soul. But for the impure soul, it is not so easy. So I know my position being extremely impure, you all are pure. But how to become purified? What is the means to purify the soul? Well, observing this Kartik Rat is one of the most powerful ways to purify the heart. And what are we purifying the heart? Of all of our narthas, the pride, the envy, the illusion, the greed, the lust, the anger, these things that contaminate the heart. Because then, if we purify the heart, then this antakalechama meva smaramukva kalebra, then remembering Krishna becomes very easy. Very easy. So in this month of Kartik, whatever devotional service we do, we'll talk at the end about how we can observe Kartik. But whatever devotional service we do, we obtain extraordinary amounts of purification of the heart. And remember, that purification of the heart is what's going, allow, going to allow us to remember Krishna. And remembering Krishna is our ticket back home, back to Godhead, where we can enjoy in loving service of the Supreme Lord eternally. So this is the link back home. So in this month of Kartik, this Dhamma Dharma, Krishna performs many, many sweet pastimes. Many, many pastimes. And what is the purpose of these pastimes? The purpose of these pastimes for us is that by remembering these pastimes, by studying them, it increases our attraction to Krishna. I said in the beginning, what are we attracted to? What is occupying our mind? The things that we are attracted to. And what is it that we're attracted to? Our family, our wealth, our faith, all these things. But what is really the only true object that is worthy of our attention? The Lotus Feet of Shishi Radha Kunjana. Now how to make that happen? We have to increase our attraction to Krishna. And so we increase our attraction to Krishna by hearing about all of these pastimes. So Krishna performs them and he does so in a way that captures our heart and consciousness. And such then, remembering Krishna becomes so easy. It becomes a natural affinity. It is not the one has to go out and think about. Does a mother have to think about her child? Oh, I have to remember my child, particularly a newborn child. Does she have to like put it in her to-do list? Does she have to have calendar reminders? Hey Alexa, remind me to think about my child. Mothers, do you have to ever do that? Why? Because your heart's full of love. So it happens spontaneously. So similarly, when our hearts become full of love of Krishna, remembrance becomes spontaneous. There's actually no room for anything else. So that is why we hear about these pastimes. And Krishna performs so many pastimes in this month of Kartik. So in the time remaining, we'll discuss a few of them, not in detail of the pastimes, we'll use the remaining weeks during Kartik to go into each of them in detail, but just try to understand the breadth of what Krishna did in this month, just to understand how potent it is and how very dear and special it is. And also, what special qualities Krishna shows and what instructions Krishna gives to us so that we can advance in purification and in our remembrance of Krishna. Okay? So, today is Sharad Purnima, the full moon day in the autumn season. So those of you, how many of you have been to Vrindavan? How many have been to the Vrindavan in the summer? Yeah? What is it like in the summer? Hot. That is the first word that comes to mind. 
hot. How many of you have been in December? What is it like in December? Cold. Cold. So Vrindavan has these seasons. But what is the autumn season like? Anybody has been to Vrindavan during Kartik? It is like perfection. It is the most perfect time of the year. So this autumn season in Vrindavan, it is described in the 10th canto Srimad Bhagavatam. How beautiful Vrindavan looks. We're coming out of the rainy season, so everything is green. The lakes and ponds are filled with clear, cooling waters. The fragrant flowers are in full bloom. All the birds are chirping in ecstasy. And it is the sweetest of environments, this autumn season in Vrindavan. Very beautifully described in Srimad Bhagavatam. So it is on the Purnima day in this autumn season that Krishna decided to carry out his, one of his most famous pastimes, his Rasa Lila pastime. And he played on a flute. And we see in this pastime so many lessons, one of which is that there are impediments in our service to Krishna. There are challenges, there are obstacles. But the devotee is so attached to the Supreme Lord that they overcome any impediment. And Shukadeva Goswami describes how, you know, when Krishna was playing on his flute, and you know, the gopis were engaged in so many household activities. You know, how many of us find, you know, it's, I can't come to the temple today because I have too many chores. I can't come to the temple because I have too much office work. I have too much this work, too much that work. So actually the gopis are going to come and show us how to handle those situations. What we should do when it is Sunday 4.15 and Radha Kunjbihari is playing on his flute. Is he playing on his flute right now? Yes. And he's calling all of us. And what we should do? Just come and drop everything and run to see Shishi Radha Kuntriyari. And if one does, one will find complete perfection. And whatever we left behind, don't worry, Krishna will help arrange that. But it takes some determination, because everything, every step in the Gautam will find some reason to find obstacles. But the pure devotees of the Lord, the residents of Vrindavan, they never let any obstacle get in the way of them. So this pastime takes place during this month. We know that Krishna performed a very sweet pastime of lifting Govardhan Hill during this month of Kartik. And this is a very powerful pastime for so many reasons. And maybe in a few weeks as we celebrate Govardhan Lila, we'll go into the pastime in detail. But what Krishna was doing by this pastime? He, his first activity was to stop the worship of Lord Indra. And why he was doing that? Out of envy, thinking, why worship Ayamisha, worship me? His mood was to bestow the greatest of blessings to Lord Indra. And what was that blessing? To smash his pride. Why? Because pride is an obstacle in our path to devotional service. When there is pride in the heart, the, the rasa of pure bhakti cannot be relished. So when Krishna really shows favor to us, he smashes our pride. Now, what's it like to have our pride smashed? Anybody lines up, like, you know, lines up in the Sunday feast for Gulab Jamuns? Do we line up to have our pride smashed? No. It's painful. It hurts. What hurts? That pride. That's what hurts. But it's actually Krishna's greatest blessings to us. Because we cannot make progress in devotional service. It is pride that led us here. Thinking, why you, why not me? 
And so it is the eradication of the pride in our heart that allows us to make devotional service. That's why um, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, Tanada pi suni chena tarora pi shahishno mani na manadena kirtanya sada hari. How can we chant the holy names of the Lord constantly? One must be humble. Very, very humble. So Krishna, by performing this Govardhan Lila, shows great mercy to Lord Indra by smashing his pride. And I'm sure none of us have prayed like this, or maybe not often, but we should bow to the feet of Krishna and say, Krishna, can you prolifically and emphatically smash my pride also? Yeah, it's a little painful, maybe a little embarrassing. You know, Lord Indra was also a little embarrassed by what happened, but was significantly benefited. If you read Lord Indra's prayers to Krishna after this whole pastime, we often stop up to that point. But actually, we should study these prayers. They are so sweet and they are extremely instructive about what is the result of having our pride smashed. How much consciousness Lord Indra had to understand his position as servant of Krishna. Very sweet. This Govardhan Lila also is very sweet because it shows Krishna's reciprocation with all of us. See, when Krishna says, Sarva Dharma Prithya Ja, He says, you surrender everything to me. In this state of ignorance, we sometimes think, oh, that's nice of Krishna. I do all the work and he gets all the benefits. But actually, when the pure devotee surrenders everything to Krishna, Krishna surrenders everything he has back to his devotees. His pure devotee has nothing in their heart but to serve Krishna. And what is the only thing in Krishna's heart? To enjoy and serve his devotees. So in this Govardhan Lila, when Indra came and brought the Samvartaka clouds to devastate Vrindavan, Krishna could have just went, and Samvartaka clouds would have went flying away. Why did he lift Govardhan? He could have called Anantashesh to create a, an umbrella over, and you think, well, is Anantashesh big enough? I mean, maybe he could not cover all. Anantashesh is holding all the universes on his head. So certainly he could have created a beautiful umbrella in the crane, and Vrindavan would have went on his way. So why Krishna lifted Govardhan? Why he went through that effort? Because we know that the residents of Vrindavan, they had one desire. That is that they wanted constant association with Krishna. But it was not being fulfilled. Mother Yashoda would have her time with Krishna in the morning. Where she would dress him, bathe him, and then she would you know, undress him and redress him, undress him and redress him, just to extend the time in which she could have with him. But meanwhile, the coward boys are pounding at the door. Krishna, come on, come on, it's time to go. Because they know their time is fixed also. Right? They have a curfew, deadline. They have to come back. So like this, Mother Yashoda would relent. And then the coward boys would enjoy. But they were just counting down. And five o'clock came, they had to go back. And then they had to get me separated from Krishna. And then Nanda Baba and the elderly coward men would enjoy. And like this, everybody was trading off their time with Krishna. But they all had one desire. Why I can't be with Krishna 24-7? So to fulfill that desire, the desire of all the residents of Vrindavan, he lifted Govardhan. And there was no other occupation but to stand under Govardhan with everybody. Everybody was invited at that time. And nobody would question, why you are here, it's my time with Krishna. Nobody would get into that. There would be no competition. And so all the residents entered underneath Govardhan, which in itself is spectacular. You know, if, if, if someone is holding a rock like this, would you stand underneath it? No. Well, an eight-year-old boy is holding 
a 64 mile long, 60 mile wide mountain on his finger, not even finger, the fingernail, and yet all the residents were not happily went in. They're not thinking, what if Krishna drops it? We're all chapatis. They have full, they have full faith in Krishna. They know in Krishna's presence, nothing wrong can happen. Maybe our plan in Krishna's presence doesn't manifest and we think something wrong happened. But that is not wrong. Why? Because Krishna's plan happened. And whose plan is perfect? Our plan or Krishna's plan? Krishna's plan is always perfect. So the resident of Vrindavan, they had full faith. Just as the coward boys walked into the mouth of Agasur, thinking, maybe it's a snake, maybe it's not. Oh, wow, when Krishna's with us, what harm can happen? So like this, all the residents entered underneath Govardhan. And Krishna shows in this pastime how he reciprocates with his devotees. So millions of residents of Vrindavan are there. Millions and millions of cows, all the living have entered underneath this Govardhan. So anybody has gone to like a very crowded theater and there's a stage. So we know some people have front row seats, but other people have back. And some people are watching with binoculars because they're so far they can't even see. All right? So you can imagine, was, was this the situation of the residents of Vrindavan as they're all gathered under Govardhan? Everybody had a front row seat. Nobody was seeing Krishna from the back side, from the side. Krishna was in the middle of Govardhan. So by our material estimation, everybody is around. So some people will have sides, some in the back, some on this side, and some in the front, right? But everybody had a front row, front face-to-face -face darshan of the Supreme Lord. How is that possible? This is the mystical potency of the Lord and how He uses these potencies in reciprocation with them, all of us. Our relationship with Krishna is very deep and personal. It's very intimate. He reciprocates with each and every one of us. And the beauty of Krishna is when He reciprocates with you, it doesn't take away any reciprocation with you or you or me or anyone else. In material relationships, if I give time to one friend, by definition, I'm giving less time to others. Right? Because I'm limited. But Krishna is unlimited. And so He gives Himself fully to each and every one of His children. Every living entity. And the reciprocation is that we all experience a very deep and personal relationship with the Lord. Just like the residents of Vrindavan, standing under Govardhan, they had this intimate darshan of the Lord. And how sweet their experience was? We say Krishna is all attractive. What does that mean? How can we understand all attractive? Well, we can understand all attractive by one logical conclusion, which is whatever we find attractive in the world, either in things, or in people, or in different experiences, different arrangements, whatever we find attractive in the world. What is the source of that attraction? Who is the source of that attraction? Krishna. He possesses that attractive quality in full. Whatever we are experiencing, it's a, some small amount. But Krishna possesses it in full. So when the residents of Vrindavan were gathered in the Govardhan for seven days and seven nights, they were simply staring and drinking the nectarian beauty of Krishna. Seven days and seven nights, they didn't feel a moment of hunger, a moment of thirst, a moment of tiredness. Why? They were so overwhelmed in the beauty of Krishna. And each moment that they saw Krishna, 
He was more beautiful and more captivating than the moment before. You know, if you go to an art museum and you go see the world's most famous paintings, how long you can look at them? A few minutes? An hour? Not even. It, the, 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 the rasa, the experience, it dissipates. This is material rasa. But Krishna's attractive features are so... They are unlimited and ever-expanding. That each moment that we experience, it increases in bliss. And so the residents of Vrindavan for seven days, as soon as the rain stopped, they were like, oh, why did it have to stop? Moments ago, this was the most fearful of conditions, that they were drowning, but absorbed in the beauty of Krishna. They forgot all of their other lamentations. Everything else became, left their consciousness. Just like I said, we have so many impediments, this work, that work. And if we leave it all and come to Krishna, we still fear what will happen to them. The residents of Vrindavan, they had no fear. They knew coming and seeing Shishi Radha Kunj Vihari is the best thing we can ever do. It is the best use of our time. And it is the most fortunate opportunity that Srila Prabhupada has given to us. It is the greatest of gifts of which we'll be celebrating. We'll talk in a few minutes about the 50th year. But this is Govardhan Lila. We, of course, know the most famous Damodar Lila. And we won't discuss the Damodar Lila in detail today. But we know that Krishna shows one amazing feature. That Krishna gives himself to his devotees. And he became bound by Mother Yashoda. And what was he bound by? Was he bound by Mother Yashoda's robes? He was bound by Mother Yashoda's love. This is the power of bhakti. Bhakti is what? It is love. It is an expression of love through service. Through my service, I express my love to Krishna. Every time we render devotional service, we should think, am I doing service to express my love to Krishna? Or am I doing service for some other motive? To fulfill my ego, to fulfill my desire, to make someone else envious, or am I doing it as an expression of love to Krishna? If it is an expression of love, then it is bhakti. So Mother Yashoda, Yashoda means the giver of fame. She's giving Krishna supreme fame, although Krishna is the source of all fame, of course, by this pastime. But Mother Yashoda initially could not bind Krishna. She brought all the ropes Nanda Baba had. And Nanda Maharaj has a lot of ropes. How many cows he has? 900,000. And each cow requires rope. So you can imagine his storehouse of rope. Amazon has nothing on Nanda Maharaj when it comes to rope. Yet she had tied all those ropes together. And this small boy, how big is the abdomen of a small boy? One milk gallon size, maybe? She could not close it. And our Acharya's comment that in order to render devotional service, two things are required. One is the mercy of Krishna. Without the mercy of Krishna, we cannot even come into his eternal home. Can you just walk into somebody's house? No. What do you need? Permission. Permission. So how all of us walk in to the home of the Supreme Personality of Godhead? Just now. How we walked in? With permission. With the invitation and love from our Eternal Father. His Protestant. So devotional service cannot be done without the mercy of Krishna. But mercy alone is not sufficient. Sometimes we think, oh, when Krishna wishes 
blesses me, then I'll be able to chant his holy names. We speak like this. Oh, when Krishna blesses me, then I'll be able to read Srimad Bhagavatam and Bhagavad Gita. When Krishna blesses me, I'll be able to come and serve Shri Shri Radhakun. Sometimes we say that. But mercy is there, but we have to do our part, which is determination. We must be determined in devotional service. So Mother Yashoda was two finger length short of each time she extended the rope. One, two fingers representing one, we need Krishna's mercy, and two, we must be determined. You know, if a farmer in a field is sitting there and praying for rain and sun, please come rain and, and rain, rain come, and rain comes, but they haven't done their part and planted the fields. Will anything come? Anything will manifest? They're praying for a rain, but they haven't done their part to plant the crops. Will any crops grow? But if they do all the work of planting the fields, planting the crops, but rain doesn't come, will any crops grow? So both are required. Our endeavor and Krishna's mercy. We must endeavor in the process of devotional service. We must be determined. There will always be obstacles. There will always be challenges. But to one who remains determined to succeed, then Krishna showers unlimited mercy. When Krishna saw Mother Yashoda perspiring, the flowers from her hair fallen, her sari becoming disheveled. She was running here and there looking for more rope, determined nothing was going to stop her from protecting her child by binding her that afternoon. When Krishna saw that determination, then what happened? She was able to bind it. So our determination must be there in devotional service. And if we are, then we will see Krishna's reciprocation. Because again, every step we take, thousands of steps the Supreme Lord takes back to us. So this is another pastime that takes place. So many other activities take place during this month of Karthik. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu visited Vrindavan and rediscovered for all of our benefits Radha Kund. We know that Dhruva Maharaj, he went to Vrindavan, Madhuvan particularly, and performed intense austerity. And it was during the month of Karthik that Krishna reciprocated with his austerity and personally came and gave him darshan. We know Ambarish Maharaj, he performed a vrat of following a Kadashi for one year. And then Durvasa Muni came as a guest on the Dvadashi day, just as the breakfast time was expiring. And in a bind, Ambarish Maharaj, under guidance from the Brahmanas, took some Ashman as a way to break his fast. But Nirvasa Muni became extremely upset and cursed Ambarish Maharaj and then invoked a fiery demon pulling a hair from his head to kill Ambarish Maharaj. So offended he was by something that was not to take offense by. And we know what happened then. Sridharshan Chakra came and destroyed this demon. When we are in trouble, when we are in danger, who is our protector? It is the Supreme Personality of God. Surda Sarva Bhutanam. Krishna says at the end of the fifth chapter, I am the ever well-wisher. 
Yakva Mam Shanti Murichati. One who knows this can find peace. Finding peace through all kinds of other protection, we always are worried because it could fail. Nothing is foolproof in the material world. But Krishna's protection is foolproof. And in this pastime, this Sudarshan Chakra chases Dravasa Muni. And Dravasa Muni looks for shelter everywhere. And he found it nowhere. Even went all the way up to Lord Vishnu. And there, there are some exquisite verses. I encourage all of you to go and read these verses. But in these verses, Krishna describes that how he himself is powerless to excuse Durvasa Muni. How the all-powerful, almighty Durvasa Muni, I'm sorry, Krishna cannot excuse Durvasa Muni. I just said, by offering a lamp to Krishna during this month of Kartik, the sins that one acquires from 1,000 yuga cycles, that duration of time is eliminated by offering one lamp, 30 seconds. So that is the quote, but he could not forgive Dravasa Muni. Why? Krishna explains, the devotee is so dear to me that all that exists in my heart is the thoughts of all of my devotees. Krishna makes space in his own heart for all of us if we take to the process of devotional service. And like this, he goes on to explain how dear the devotees are to him. So he says, I can't forgive you, only Amrish Maharaj can forgive you. So Dravasa Muni goes back to Amrish Maharaj. Now a whole another year has elapsed. And of course, Amrish Maharaj begins. This pastime takes place in the month of Kartik. One of the most auspicious festivals that is celebrated in Kartik. Anybody knows in Vrindavan what festival is most celebrated during Kartik? Govardhan Puja. Govardhan Puja. One guess. What else? Any other? Huh? Ra appearance of Baulastami, appearance of Radha Kund. Diwali. Diwali. Prabhupada's disappearance. Prabhupada's disappearance. This is the grandest festival in our Krishna Balram temple. Because his divine grace, A.C. Bhakti Vedanta Samachala Prabhupada, he left his body left this material world in the month of Kartik. In Shivan And you might wonder why we would celebrate somebody leaving, right? We typically are mournful of that. But when the pure devotee, the Acharya, leaves, their appearance and departure are both equally auspicious. Because actually the Acharya is never leave us. Because they are alive through their Vani, through their words. Actually more potent than the association in form, in Vapu, more potent than that is association through Vani. And how do we associate with Srila Prabhupada and Vani every day? by reading Srila Prabhupada's books. When we read Srila Prabhupada's books, we are associating with him one-to-one. -one. Some of us may think, oh, I wish I had the opportunity to meet Srila Prabhupada. Then run to the bookstore now, grab a book, open it and read it, and you are meeting Srila Prabhupada. That is a one-to-one -one interaction with Shiva Prabhupada. And it is only, only because of the mercy of Shiva Prabhupada, the extreme compassion he had for all of us, 
that he left Vrindavan and came to teach us. How many of us know how to celebrate Kartik without the teachings of Srila Prabhupada? How we would have the opportunity to come and see this most beautiful Shishi Radha Kunjabari had Srila Prabhupada not personally given us this gift 50 years ago. He endeavored at the very advanced age, whatever impediments we face in devotional service, in coming to the temple, in rendering service, just read Parupa Lilamrita. And you'll never ever express in your own heart any impediments. Because our impediments compared to what Srila Prabhupada faced are nothing. But did those impediments stop Srila Prabhupada? He had three heart attacks on his initial journey here. Most of us, if we have a headache, will not even take the journey here. But he had three heart attacks. Did he disembark at the next port and return home? No. He carried on. He carried on. Why? For all of us. For our benefit. So that we would have the opportunity to connect with our eternal father. Shishi Radha Kundari. So that we can understand the potency of rendering devotional service in this month of Kartik. So that we have some opportunity to purify the heart so that we can remember Krishna, of course, at the time of leaving this body, but 24-7. So that we can know about all these pastimes and activities that take place and understand the real meaning how to understand why Krishna lifted Govardhan Hill. To understand how uh, Krishna was bound by Mother Yashoda. To understand why Durvasa Muni could not find shelter from anybody else. To understand how Dhruva Maharaj, through his prayers, was able to uh, bring the Supreme Lord in front of him. All of these things we can understand only by the mercy and compassion of Shilpa. So his disappearance day is the most celebrated because without his contribution to us, all the others carry virtually no purport for us. So this is the great fortune we have. And so this month of Kartik is the prime opportunity for us. And this year is the most special Kartik month ever. Why? Because we are celebrating the golden jubilee anniversary of the installation of our beloved Shishi Baba Kunjari. Fifty years ago, on the day of Govardhan Puja, by the unlimited mercy of Srila Prabhupada, Radha Kunjari manifested here in Detroit for all of us. And I don't know how many of us will be here at the 100th anniversary. <laughs> so we can take this truly as a once in a lifetime opportunity. We use this word once in a lifetime sometimes loosely. But this is truly once in a lifetime. Don't miss this rarest opportunity to receive unlimited mercy from the Supreme Lord. We'll find some obstacles. There will be some challenges. There will be some scheduled conflicts. Clear them now. Clear them now. There will be nothing more valuable for us in our whole life than to participate and render service to Shishi Radha Kundari during this most auspicious 50th anniversary. It is the greatest opportunity. And so this month of Kartik, we can even take advantage of the blessings 
even more than other times this year. So please participate uh, in these festivals. So many wonderful opportunities and ways to participate. You can come and volunteer your time. You can make uh, a donation to the Lord. And you can just be a part of the festival, honor Prashadam, in all these ways participate. And it will be our greatest reward, our greatest purification of heart. So I'll just conclude with just a few things about observing Kartik. So what to do, how we can best observe Kartik? Well, there are many ways, but as we read in the purport to this verse, the primary way to observe Kartik is to intensify and improve the quality of our chanting of the holy names. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu established this as the Yuga Dharma, the means by which we can purify the heart and reawaken our lost relationship with our Supreme Father. This chanting is the most powerful means. There is no other way, there is no other way, there is no other way than chanting of the holy names, chanting of the holy names, chanting of the holy names. So take to this process of chanting. And whatever you are chanting today, Prabhupada's famous uh, you know, quotes were when Book distribution scores would come, he would celebrate them and then he would say, Double it. <laughs> so we can take our japa and double it. If we are doing zero, you cannot double it. <laughs> <laughs> then you have to do at least two rounds. That's 16 minutes. You give those 16 minutes to the Lord for 30 days during this month of Kartik. And you see how he reciprocates. And those of us, when you are chanting more, increase your rounds, increase the quality, chanting earlier in the morning, attentively as possible. No, you know, two-handed chanting. What is two-handed chanting? One hand on the phone, one hand in the bean bag. No two-handed chanting. Single-handed chanting. And just increase the quality of our chanting. Because this is the prime opportunity we have during this month of Kartik. So to double down and to intensify our chanting, that is the first way. We offer a gile to the Supreme Lord every day. We talked about the benefits. They are extraordinary. In the Skanda Purana is also described that once a mouse had the habit of eating the ghee from the burnt out ghee wicks. That was his diet. He was living in the temple. But this mouse one day was a little over hungry. Maybe he was doing a kadash the day before, I don't know. But he was hungry. So this ghee wick was not yet fully extinguished and he bit into it. And we know mice have a space between their teeth. And the wick got stuck between his teeth. And he started to burn. And so this mouse started to jump around. And he left his body. But the Lord saw this as an offering of a gilan. And the mouse was liberated and went back home to God. This is the potency. So imagine if we offer a lamp with some in sincerity and prayer to the Lord. My Lord, I'm offering this lamp. Please help me purify. If you really are intelligent, you'll pray. Please smash my cry like you smash Lord in yours. Yes, I know it'll be painful, but please do it. Please give me the strength to chant, the determination and enthusiasm. Imagine what effect happens when we offer a lamp like this. So offer a lamp every day. We'll offer a lamp here today. And every day you offer, and on Sundays you come and offer to the Supreme Lord. This is most beneficial during this month of Kartik. We recite Dhamma Rashtakam, these eight verses 
that describe the glories of bhakti, the glories of devotional service in Vrindavan. So recite this Dhamadarastakam. And if you're not a Sanskrit scholar, my uh, request is that read the translations. Yes, the, 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 the song of Dhamadar Ashtakam is the most sweet. It is so enticing. So you recite that. But we don't want to be just rich. We want to know what is it that I'm reciting. So read the translation. I promise you, the translations are equally inspiring. They're very powerful um, prayers that Sakyavrata Muni has composed, explaining the highest principles of bhakti. So sing Dhammarastakam, but then read the translations so that we can understand the purport of what we are singing. There are two ekadashis during this karti. They are very, very auspicious. Observe these ekadashis. Fast from grains in whatever austerity is suitable to your condition. Do it, but observe these ekadashis with full vigor. They are very, very auspicious. Then finally, you can take some karti vrat, some vow. And you can have an affirmative vow or a negative vow. Affirmative vow, I'll chant more. Maybe I'll read one chapter, one page of Bhagavad Gita every day, of Srimad Bhagavatam. Some vow, something that you're going to do every day. And then if you can take a negative vow, you know, some austerity. Take a little bit of austerity for the, as an offering to the Lord. In Krishna consciousness, we don't have so much austerity. What do we do? We feast, we sing, we dance, we enjoy. A little bit of austerity is there. You can abstain from a favorite food stuff. Maybe an austerity would be, you know, I'm not going to watch CNN anymore or read this newspaper. You know, something that we know is not really productive for us, but we enjoy. We can take that as an austerity during this month of Kartik. And by renouncing that, whatever that is for each of us as individuals, Krishna will reciprocate greatly. So you can follow a Kartik vow, both something affirmative, something I'm going to do, and also maybe something that I'm going to stop. And by this following, chanting, offering a gilam, reciting Dhammadarastakam, following a Kadashi, following a Kartik vow, five things. There are hundreds of things we can do. These are just some five things we can maybe boil it down to. We can make great progress uh, in devotional life. So this is the glories of Karti. Thank you very much. Any questions or comments? Any comments on Karti Club? Yes, Prabhupada. No, thank you for